Welcome to Season 2, Episode 1 of the Bhagavad Gita Painted Series. In this series, I focus on key concepts, saints, and values inspired by the Bhagavad Gita. This episode focuses on Lord Krishna, the eighth avatar of Lord Vishnu, the preserver aspect of the Hindu Trinity. Hindu paintings show Lord Krishna at different stages of his life, an infant, a young boy, or the wise charioteer giving counsel to Prince Arjuna. Lord Krishna was born in a dungeon in the city of Mathura, within the state of Uttar Pradesh in India, around 3200 BCE. He was born in the Yadava clan to Queen Devaki and her husband, King Vasudeva. Devaki had a brother, Kansa, a tyrant who, along with other demon kings, was terrorizing the earth. Lord Vishnu took birth as Lord Krishna to end this tyranny. Kansa agreed to let Devaki get married to a Yadava prince in the hopes of taking over the Yadava clan. However, when Devaki was getting married, Kansa was told by fortune tellers that the son of Devaki would bring his end. In his fear, Kansa decided he would kill Devaki. But after Prince Vasudeva begged for his wife's life and promised to hand his son to Kansa as soon as it was born, Kansa let his sister live but kept them imprisoned. On the night of Lord Krishna's birth, as soon as he was born, a bright light filled the prison and King Vasudeva was woken up by a divine voice that guided him to take Krishna across the Yamuna river and leave him with Nandaraja, the head of the Gopa tribe. The prison doors opened for him and the guards fell asleep. Nandaraja's wife, Yashoda, had also given birth to a baby girl that night. Vasudeva secretly carried baby Krishna across the Yamuna river and exchanged the babies. He headed back to the prison with the baby girl, who gave a loud cry as soon as she lay next to Devaki. Devaki begged Kansa not to kill the baby. She pleaded that the prophecy must have been wrong, as the son was meant to bring the end of Kansa. When Kansa tried to kill the exchanged baby, it transformed into Goddess Duruga, who warned him that his death had already arrived in the kingdom, and then she disappeared. Kansa eventually freed Vasudeva and Devaki and let them live in a separate palace. Krishna grew up unaware of his destiny in Gokul with his foster parents. Thank you for watching so far. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit the like button. If you're new here, please subscribe. This will ensure that more people can find this resource. Click the notification button so that you can be the first to know about new uploads. And please do comment below. I'll do my best to reply to any questions. Thank you. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 2 of the Bhagavad Gita Painter Series. In this series, I focus on key concepts, saints and values inspired by the Bhagavad Gita. This episode focuses on Lord Shiva. Shiva, the auspicious one, also known as Mahadeva, the great god, is one of the principal deities in Hinduism. Lord Shiva is said to be the deity of death and time, also known as Adi Yogi Shiva. He is regarded as the patron god of yoga, meditation and the arts. Within the holy trinity of Hinduism, which includes Brahma, the creator, and Vishnu, the preserver, Lord Shiva is known as the destroyer or transformer. At the end of every cosmic cycle, Lord Shiva destroys the universe, which then allows Lord Brahma the opportunity to begin the creative process anew. Each of the Trimurti is paired with a goddess, which is their respective energy and creative power. Lord Shiva is paired with Goddess Parvati, the goddess of power, because destruction and transformation is not possible without great power. They are both benevolent and fearsome depictions of Lord Shiva. In benevolent aspects, he is depicted as an omniscient yogi who lives an ascetic life on Mount Kailesh, as well as a householder with wife Parvati and his two children, Ganesha and Kartikeya. In his fierce aspects, he is often depicted slaying demons. Depictions of Lord Shiva include the serpent around his neck, the crescent moon, the holy river Ganga flowing from his matted hair, the third eye on his forehead, the trident, and the Damaru drum. Thank you for watching so far. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, 
please hit the like button. If you're new here, please subscribe. This will ensure that more people can find this resource. Click the notification button so that you can be the first to know about new uploads. And please do comment below. I'll do my best to reply to any questions. Thank you. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 3 of the Bhagavad Gita Painter Series. In this series, I focus on key concepts, saints and values inspired by the Bhagavad Gita. This episode focuses on the Buddha. Siddhartha Gautama was born a prince around 500 years BCE. It was predicted that he would either become a great king or an enlightened being. His father wished for his son to become a great king. And for the first 28 years of his life, secluded Siddhartha in the palace, where he was showered with every luxury and extravagance one could imagine. He was married to a princess, and she gave birth to a son. When Siddhartha was 29, he asked the chariot driver to take him to see the people outside the palace. This was his first exposure to old age, sickness and death, all of the things that his father hid from him. After seeing this, Siddhartha was troubled and sorrowful about the sufferings that had to be endured in life. Siddhartha then came upon a fourth sight, an ascetic who had devoted himself to finding the cause of human suffering. This sight gave him hope that he too might be released from the sufferings arising from being repeatedly reborn, and he resolved to follow the ascetic's example. In the middle of the night, he left the palace and his family in search of enlightenment. Over the next six years, Siddhartha wandered from place to place. He met with many teachers and subjected himself to severe asceticism. Unhappy with not finding the answers he was looking for, he eventually sat under a tree and resolved to not leave until he attained enlightenment. After many days of meditation, he attained the goal. The Buddha realized the middle way between severe deprivation and grand indulgence. He uncovered the Four Noble Truths, which is Dukkha, life is suffering or dissatisfaction. Sumodaya, the cause of the suffering is craving or desire. Naroda, it is possible to end the suffering. Maga, the way to end the suffering is by following the Eightfold Path. The Buddha's teaching of the Eightfold Path is 1. Right Understanding 2. Right Thought 3. Right Speech 4. Right Action 5. Right Livelihood 6. Right Effort 7. Right Mindfulness and 8. Right Concentration For the next 45 years, Siddhartha spent his life traveling and preaching. He died at the age of 80, and by this time, there were thousands who had started to follow his teachings. Centuries after his death, he came to be known by the title of Buddha, which means Awakened One or Enlightened One. Thank you for listening. In the description and comments below, I add in more helpful links. Please do like, comment, share and subscribe. This helps more people find this resource. Click the bell notification button so you get to be the first to know about new uploads. Thank you. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 4 of the Bhagavad Gita Painter Series. In this series, I focus on key concepts, saints and values inspired by the Bhagavad Gita. This episode focuses on Durga. Durga is a major deity in Hinduism. She is associated with protection, strength, motherhood, destruction and wars. In some places, Goddess Durga is worshipped as Sarasvati, Parvati and Lakshmi. According to Hindu scriptures, there was once a half-human, half-buffalo demon terrorizing the earth. In order to gain invincibility, Maheshasura, the buffalo demon, performed severe austerities to Lord Brahma and asked to be granted immortality. Lord Brahma refused him the gift of immortality, since all beings must die at some point. Maheshasura then asked that only a woman be able to kill him. 
Lord Brahma granted him this wish. Mahishasura, in his arrogance, imagined that this was the equivalent of immortality, since he believed it was impossible for a woman to slay a person of his strength. Emboldened by this belief, he started a war with the gods. In the battle that ensued, the gods, led by Indra, were defeated. At this point, the gods approached the trinity of Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma and Lord Vishnu to seek help. The three gods combined their divine energies and created a powerful warrior goddess. When the gods asked for her name, she replied, I am Durga, the inaccessible one. I am Prakriti, the substance that gives form and identity to all things. I am Shakti, the power that enables all creatures to exist, to feel, think, act and react. I am Maya, the delusion that makes life alluring yet elusive. Durga, who had ten arms, each carrying a weapon, rode a lion into battle and defeated the buffalo demon. During a time of great rage, her anger burst from her forehead in her most fearsome form, the goddess Kali. Thank you for listening. In the description and comments below, I add in more helpful links. Please do like, comment, share and subscribe. This helps more people find this resource. Click the bell notification button so you get to be the first to know about new uploads. Thank you.